All right. Welcome to Wednesday night. I am Vicki Medina. I'm that man's wife. Almost for a year now. Exciting. So, we are on week three of Merry Christmas to Me. I love Christmas, y'all. Like, Christmas is a gift to me. It's the greatest. I love the cold. I love the colors. So much that I actually got married and had a Christmas wedding. Because it's the best. All right? We're going to begin today. We're going to watch a video. Um, it is about the three wise men. Friends. Ah, Jaspis. <laughs> so good to see you again. <laughs> we were just preparing to depart to Bethlehem to visit the manger. Forgive my truancy. Even as a wise man, it proved difficult to find the perfect gift for the Prince of Peace. Ah, yes. And what gift did you choose, Jaspis? I desired something both precious and unique. So I traveled through Egypt for three months to the land of Punt and found a bottle of frankincense. Oh, perfect gift indeed, Jaspis. <laughs> I too traveled far mm. to the Arabian Peninsula, nearly losing my life in exchange for a bottle of myrrh. How glorious. Yes. <laughs> Brothers, I have a confession to make. I'm afraid that my gift did not require a long journey. But verily, I did sell all that I own to procure this gold for our Lord. <gasps> Balthazar, <laughs> most impressive. Yes. <laughs> Doron, I nearly uh, forgot about you. What have you found for the Almighty One, even the King of Kings? Well, uh, I decideth to be a little more practical in my gift selection, so... Don't judge. <laughs> of course not, Doron. I'm sure that you spent many years selecting a humble yet appropriate item. Yes. Yes, that is, yep, sure did. <laughs> well, we better head out, brothers. <laughs> Show us the gift, Doron. Is it just me, or, or is the star starting to look a little dimmer? You know, we, we should get going. <laughs> Show us the gift, Doron. All right, fine. But remember, we all agreed beforehand on a 10 shekel limit. And none of you followed that. Relax, Doron, for it is not the price that is important, but the thought that truly... I got him a gift card! <sighs> that, that's great! Yes! <sighs> yes! Why did I put this off until the last minute? This is like the least wise thing I have ever done. I'm sure it'll be fine, Doron. No, no. You guys always do this to me. You remember last year at the Wise Men White Elephant Gift Exchange? You brought an actual white elephant. How was I supposed to compete with that? I'm sure your gift will get used eventually. Yes. Uh, yay, perhaps Joseph will use it to buy a new tool belt. Yes. Tool belt? Or as a re-gift. <sighs> but, um, but, but in any case, brethren, we must depart. No, I can't show up to the manger with this. Mary's gonna be like, gold, frankincense, myrrh, gift card? Okay. Wow, what a perfect gift for my sons. AKA, the most important person ever! Right, settle down, Doron. Just make sure that you give it with <laughs> Even the, the shepherd boy is gonna one-up me with a cute, adorable baby wool hat he made! Man, they're gonna call me a fool man after this! Look, I'll tell them we went halfsies on the merge. Trust me, he'll know that we didn't, okay? I mean, I just gotta pray that this gift is good enough to- Wait. This expires 1 AD. That's today! I gotta come up with something else! Out of my way! Uh, that was one of y'all. I don't know about y'all. But I low-key love gift cards. Like, I'd be fine with that. Okay. No, his name was Doron. <laughs> I cannot with y'all. All right, so our lesson today is going to be, as you can see, about our wise men. And we're going to talk about the gifts that they offered to our King Baby Jesus. And we're going to talk about how those gifts represented something far larger than we maybe didn't realize at first, right? So before we get into the super deep stuff, we're going to talk about some controversy. Like, on the count of three, you're going to tell me what you would prefer. All right, y'all ready? We're going to talk about some Christmas cookies. Okay? Sugar cookies 
or chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Then add chocolate some little marshmallows on top, broil it for a few seconds so they get nice and melty. Um, Oof. I think sugar. Well, it depends. If it's like the soft sugar cookies from H-E-B. Yes. Oh. I'm going to say chocolate They're all right. I don't, I'm not crazy about the frosting, though. I think it's a little too I want to mix them up for our party tomorrow. Okay, there you go. All right. Christmas ornaments. Homemade or store bought? Homemade. Homemade. Depends on store bought. Well, it depends if your kid made it. Because if your kid made it, then that's probably ugly. So. <laughs> but you know what? The, them homemade it's ones have awesome. sentimental value. I feel like I'm in between. Like I'm cool with my tree having both on it. No, you put, yeah, the, put your kid's ornament on the back side where nobody sees it. Our tree, our tree rotates. That's real extra. <laughs> All right, so y'all ready? Snow on Christmas. Love it or hate it? Love it! Love it, y'all. No, low, okay, okay, low key. Low key, my husband says that I'm bougie. And he's right, but let me explain why. But my father in law is too. Let me explain why. I love the cold, and it was my dream for it to snow on our wedding day. And I told my father-in-law this, and my father-in-law is a crafty man. And he was like, Mijita, do you want me to build you a sleigh? Like he was going to legit build me a sleigh for my wedding day. And I was like, but if it doesn't snow, he's like, Mijita, I'll get you the snow. Like I will get you a snow machine. I will get you snow on your wedding day. Okay, so my father-in-law was about to come in clutch for me, all right? And then my mom was like, I need you to calm down, and you need to stop being so extra. She was probably right, but still. So I would agree. Christmas, snow, it's a necessary thing. All right. Who is your... Hey, we've gotten snow twice in my lifetime, okay? So, let's see. Who is your favorite reindeer? Rudolph the Goth. No, it's, it's uh, Dasher. Dasher. Why Dasher? But he's just so random. Like, Rudolph's the only one that has saved the day. All the other reindeers used to laugh and call him names. Oh, okay? they were bullies. They were bullies. Rudolph was different. Rudolph was trying just because he was a little different. We're all different. Wow. <laughs> All right, here's the real one. Here's the real one. All right. We can have a little debate, but if it gets too out of hand, I'm going to stop it. Although I have a feeling I know what y'all are all going to say. <sighs> Prepare yourselves, take a breath. <sighs> you might. Real or fake Christmas tree? Real. I, I want a real one, but I can't have a real one. Real. Why? I want a real one, but mm. they're just messy. Fake. Plastic real. Fake. They're messy. They set off allergies. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Real. 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 Look, okay, low key. Smells your house good. Thank you. Your house it good. does smell my house good. <laughs> Y'all, I am in love with real trees. I'm, I love them. I think they're I love so when beautiful. I, when you have to sweep up the pine, like that falls off on the floor, that's the most satisfying thing ever. That's true. Up, it's pretty fun because they're easy to pick up. up. It's just like you just see the pine and then it goes. <laughs> All right, so I love real Christmas trees. But the last few years, my mom's been allergic, and she gets like, I don't even know, like bronchitis or something, but she like looks like she's dying. <coughs> so we stopped getting real trees, and then my nephew has some allergies too. So we got fake trees. So this year, I was like, I'm married now. I'm always going to have a real tree. Da, 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 da. Guess what I have up in my house right now? A fake, a fake tree. But you know what? I got it at Walmart, and it was a really good price, like $130, and it looks pretty real. But this is the benefit of a like fake tree. You get to put it up as early as you want, and you don't have to wait for them to come into the lot. Yeah. I want a boss with those trees. Yes. I, that is nice. Those Hallmark trees that they be showing. Yes. In my life, I would turn down to a Hallmark movie. I'm like taking a video of it all and showing y'all first. All right. So, as we're talking about these fake and real Christmas trees, 
one thing that we didn't mention is how fast those real trees can go. Like, they're really nice, but if you don't water them every day and they get dry, all the needles are on the floor and they don't last very long, right? I feel like you're speaking from experience. I cannot speak to that experience. But I'm glad that you've enjoyed that. You're allergic to the seven moons. No, my dad does an attic. It's almost killed him multiple times. That's, that's pretty rough. All right, but as we're talking about things that fade, we're going to talk about some other things that fade as well. Okay, we put a lot of energy into our trees, decorating them, putting them up, making sure they're cut evenly, right? No. Other people. Oh, I decorated the tree. But there are some other things that go out pretty fast too. Christmas dinner, mom cooks all day long and we eat it in what, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how long she made us wait to eat, all right? Christmas presents, we open those in what, 10 minutes flat? And by the January, we're like, well, I want something new, right? Christmas cookies. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but Christmas cookies do not last long in my house. No one They don't last long in my house, y'all. Mm. Christmas spirit. Look. But you know what, y'all? Like, I'm in the Christmas spirit. But then somebody gets me mad and it goes away like that. And it takes me like staring into the open cold air to bring it back, right? But it is fleeting. But let's talk about some things that we can experience in Christmas that actually last way longer than a lot of those other things. Christmas music. No. Hallmark movies. Hang on, guys. What about our Christmas memories? They lost a lifetime. Guys, you know, that's kind of hard to talk about. Not going to lie, y'all, this is kind of hard to talk about right now because we were just talking about how, like, our families aren't going to really be able to be together, and that's kind of heartbreaking. But I can think back to, like, the New Year's traditions, or sorry, Christmas Eve traditions that my family had where we would make chocolate-covered everything, and my dad was baking pies and cookies and empanadas, and we would watch old home, um, home movies from when my sisters and I were younger. I and that was a fond memory that I'll keep with me for forever. We also have the relationships that we build. Y'all, my relationship. That's a Christmas relationship right there. That's going to last me a lifetime till death do us part, baby. <laughs> He's like, Lord, help me. And the gratitude. Guys, I think the gratitude is a really big one. Um, seeing how people come together and things, how, or how thankful people are when they receive something that's out of a norm. And I think that that's like one of my biggest things that does last is the gratitude that people feel around the holidays. And so this is true when it comes to Jesus. For many of us, the only time each year that we think about the significance of Jesus' birth is around Christmas time. We might thank God for the miracle uh, of Jesus' birth while it's fresh in our minds, but then we spend the rest of the year forgetting just how incredible the start of our Creator's life was. That He chose to humble Himself, come to the earth, and rescue us. So today I'm going to challenge us to find new ways to think of the miracle of Jesus' birth. Not just today, but for long after the Christmas music fades. There you go, Sid. I got your Christmas music for you. <laughs> so, let's take a look at our nativity scene. So, we've talked about Mary, right? And last week, who did we talk about? Shepherds. We talked about the shepherds. And this week, who are we talking about? Mary. The wise man. Jesus. The wise man. <laughs> He's a wise man. He got there. It took him some time, but he got there. It's fine. It's fine. All right, so we're going to talk about what the wise men's significance was being on the nativity scene and what the significance of their gifts were, okay? Girls, so. Let's think about this for a second. 
What would you have given baby Jesus? Don't say it out loud. I want you to think about that. What would you have given baby Jesus? I want you to think of all the pressure that we face, trying to find the perfect gifts, and those are people that are like our moms, our dads. But what would you give the Savior of the world to show him how much that you really care? I want you to think about that. What would you give baby Jesus? That's a solid answer. What would you give baby Jesus? Solid answer. What would you give baby Jesus? Joseph, what would you give baby Jesus? I mean... I know the Christian answer that you uh, want to give. Uh, well, I was going to say, with all the uh, changes that have, that have gone on over, you know, 2,000 years, it's very hard to answer that question where it would have actually been a reasonable gift to give someone. So not a gift card. Okay, Ireland. I would get him like uh, one of the past fires, like nowadays. Get them then, so you know. Oh, so you go back in time. Yeah. All right, you a time travel Jesus gift giver. All right. Um. Oh man, I'm blinking. Carissa. <laughs> what would you give baby Jesus? You don't know. Solid answer. Sid, what would you give him? Your life. The, I, mean, I feel like that's the answer that all of us would say because we know that that's the answer. But if you didn't know that that was the answer, what would you give him? So that's, that's funny because, y'all, when I was thinking about this, I was like, well, the only thing he would want is my life. And that's true. Like, I know that, right? But it's funny because back, like, if you were back then, if you didn't know that he was the Savior, what would you have gotten him? Girls. All right. What did you say? What did you say? A cattle. You know, that's actually, that's a pretty strong answer. Solid answer. Solid answer. So, we're going to jump into our scripture and we're going to talk about the gifts that he did receive and what they mean. All right, so follow along with me. I allowed y'all to have this the, on the slide. That means you got to follow along with me, all right? All right, go ahead. Okay, can I get, Emily, can you read this first slide for us, please? Good. All right, let's pause there. So, there are only a few verses about the Magi, and there are a lot of things that we really don't know about these wise men. For example, we don't know how many of them actually visited. We say three because of the three gifts, but there could have been more. We don't know, right? We don't know their names. You were right. We don't know their names, how old they were. That would explain following the star. Mm -hmm. All right, so we also don't know where exactly they came from, okay? We also don't know how they learned about the star that guided them to Jesus. We have an inference that they were astrologers. I'll take that. But here's some things that we do know. We know that they were scholars. 
based on their studies and readings, they understood that the king was going to be born and that he was going to change everything. And they knew somehow how to find Jesus. Okay? They followed a star and traveled a thousand miles just to worship him. They traveled miles on a camel. Like it wasn't even on a car or a plane, on a camel. And it probably didn't take a month. It probably took them years. It took them years. You want, it did take them years. Jesus was probably around three by the time they got there. Could you imagine traveling on a camel for three years? That's a lot. Okay? Is it? To worship no, the King Jesus? No, worship him, but like, now you think of it, on a camel for three years? That's crazy. Yeah. It's wild to us, especially when we live in a society where we're like instantly want to be places, right? I mean, it probably wasn't on a camel completely. They most likely took multiple different ways of transportation. Maybe some donkeys. Boat, bike, boat, donkeys. <laughs> probably an elephant. It was a white elephant. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I get it? Yeah. All right. So, but they traveled all of these miles to worship baby Jesus. They brought gifts with them. Really expensive gifts. All right. Maybe not exactly how they described it and how they got these gifts, but those were very expensive gifts. All right. These men were important. They were wealthy. They were intelligent. But when they learned that the new king had been born, they knew they had to go and honor him. Unlike King Herod, who immediately feared and felt threatened by baby Jesus, that, the wise, that he sent the wise men out to get a response of the new king. Okay? So... But the wise men didn't listen. They went to go worship the new king. All right, so now we're going to jump into Matthew 2, 11 through 12. We're going to talk about how these men worshipped Jesus. Did they play their favorite worship songs by Hillsong or Bethel on their Bluetooth speaker and sing it to him? Probably not, right? But here's what they did do, Okay. Ireland, can I get you to read this slide? Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and men. Being warned in a dream not to go back to King Paris, they entered into their own country by another route. Very good. Thank you. So, fun fact, I didn't know that frankincense and myrrh were liquids until this lesson. That's what I thought too. They were all solid. I forget which one was a perfume. I think that was frankincense. One of them was a perfume usually used for uh, burial. So we're actually going to talk about that. Joseph's getting ahead. Yeah. All right, so. Gold is like gold jewelry or bricks, right? Frankincense and myrrh are two different fancy containers filled with the water and the frankincense and the myrrh oils. These can be sprayed in a room or sprayed in a bottle to diffuse or with oil diffusers, right? So I know I once had a frankincense. I don't remember what it helped with. I think it helped with like headaches or something like that. Um, but they weren't very practical baby gifts, okay? They lacked the cuteness and the softness and the cuddliness, right? But these gifts were very special because they understood that the child that they were visiting was very special. So the gifts that they brought him were designed to show his praise, his glory, and ultimately his worship. Okay? So all of these gifts that the wise men gave Jesus were precious and expensive, but they were symbolic as well. So the first, gold. Gold is extremely valuable, and it is a precious metal. This was a gift that represented power. It represented royalty. It represented money, right? It wasn't a gift you would just give anyone, right? You're not going to go to a baby shower and be like, oh, I brought you some gold, right? College savings. 
for real. Can I get somebody to give me some gold? But gold was definitely a gift for a king. And Jesus is going to become the king of kings, right? So, gold was a gift for a king. Then we have frankincense. Frankincense is a resin, kind of like a tree sap, taken from the, and I know I'm not going to say this right, but I'm going to say it with some confidence, so maybe you think I say it right. Boswellia tree. Okay, and it was often used to make perfumes, as uh, was mentioned by Joseph. And it had, its it had its medicinal uses as well. But even more importantly, this was often seen as a gift that you would give a deity. In other words, frankincense was a gift for a god. The only god in Jesus' case. Then we have myrrh. Myrrh, like frankincense, is a resin taken from a different plant. It was commonly used in perfumes, but this gift was significant because it was often used to prepare a body for burial. It's strange to gift a baby myrrh because myrrh was a gift that symbolized death. So the wise men didn't give Jesus meaningless gift cards or toys. They gave him gifts that meant something. Through their gifts, they were saying three things. You are the king. You are our God. And we know you'll one day die to save us. These gifts were more than just gifts. They expressed the wise men's trust in who Jesus was. They were an act of worship. We're going to go ahead and read Psalms 105, 1 through 6. With their gifts, the wise men gave Jesus their worship. They honored him. They gave him their best and they communicated that he was worthy of their best, worthy of the long, exhausting journey it took them to find him, and worthy of everything that they could give him and more. The wise men were familiar with the prophets, whose words are recorded in the Old Testament of the Bible. So it's likely that they were also familiar with the words in Psalms like this one. Wyatt, can you read it, please? Leary. Praise him with trombone. Tambourine. Tambourine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And dance. Praise him with strings and flutes. Five. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with flashing cymbals. Six. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very good. So, the wise men understood that baby Jesus was God in the flesh. They understood that as long as he had breath, they were called to worship him. Okay? By giving Jesus these gifts that were more costly and meaningful, the wise men set an example for us. We may not be rich, and there's not really a way for us to give Jesus physical gifts. But as long as we have breath, we can give Jesus our worship. Okay? So, what is... Oh, sorry. But how exactly can we follow the example of the wise men? What does it really mean to worship Jesus? I mean, the wise men could see Jesus. They could bring him gifts. And give him attention and affection practically in physical ways. So what is worship? That's a form of worship, right? 
Worship is what happens anytime we give honor to Jesus with our words, with our actions. It's about thanking him for what he has done and praising him for who he is. Reading your Bible, that's a form of worship. Doing a praise song, that's a form of worship. Praying, all of those are forms of worship because we are honoring God. Said, okay? So, here's another question. Brings us into how do we worship, right? I just said two things. We can worship him with our? Mouth. And we can worship him with our? Arms. Arms. Our words and our actions, right? So, how can we worship with our words? So, we said some examples. Why you said? Spreading his word. Spreading his word. Praying. 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 Singing. Telling him thank you. How many times do we stop and just thank God for what he's done? Some of us quite often, some of us maybe not so often. Let's make sure it's more often than not, right? We have to thank him for what he has done for us. Guys, what, the fact that you made it here in one piece, thank God. If you make it home, thank God. That you have clothes to wear right now, thank God. That you have food to eat, thank God. That you have somebody at home that loves you. Or you have somebody who brought you here that loves you? Thank God. Thank God. What if they don't really love us? Oh, my God. That's why I said we're the people who brought you here, so it's fine. But you know what? It's fine because we love you too, so there you go. Somebody loves you. All right? We can tell him how incredible he is for all that he has done. And, we can, and y'all said it, telling others, sharing his praise, using our words to share who he is. We worship God. Now, let's talk about how we can worship with our actions. Y'all, the wise men worship Jesus with their actions by giving him gifts and bowing down before him. We can worship him through our actions by letting go of the things that keep us far from him. Letting go of the things that keep us far from him. Y'all, how many of y'all can spend hours, hours on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus? Y'all, we can spend some hours binge watching. I should know. I I do this too. Just ask him. He'll tell you. But these are distractions from being able to worship God through our actions. Get rid of the distractions. Set time aside, distraction free, to praise him, to worship him. Making time for him daily. Ain't none of y'all going to tell me you're too busy for Jesus. No. No, 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 But let me tell you why you can't tell me. No, this girl at my school, she was like, I'm too lazy to pray. I'm like, you need to pray for her. It's fine. Just pray for her. But ain't none of you can tell me that you don't have time for Jesus. Because the five minutes that you spend on TikTok, that's five minutes in Jesus' word. That's five TikTok videos. It's the five times you watch that one TikTok video to see the last slide that she put on there. Okay? Yes. All right. How about those 10 minutes that you're driving in the car instead of fighting with your siblings, listening to an audio? Ooh, that hit a little too deep there, didn't it? Yeah. Or, I mean, that poop time. How many of y'all sit there and you're swiping and you swiping? You should be swiping through your Bible app instead. Let's be real. You say you don't have time. You got time there? Well, that's me time. Spit. That should be me and Jesus time, sir. All right. So you got to find the time to spend with Jesus. And if you struggle with finding time to spend with Jesus, come talk to me. I will help you with your schedule. We will figure it out. We will have some one-on-one time to help you have some one-on-one time, okay? So, choosing to obey him 
I'm going to step on some toes right here. Obey your parents. You choose to obey your parents, then you're choosing to obey Jesus. I'm allergic to that. You're not allergic to it. It's fine. You're more allergic to not obeying your parents. Trust me. That's true. Let me tell you guys. I was that kid. I was a baby. I got away with so much. Like, nobody paid attention to me. My parents were way too tired for my sisters to pay attention to me. But let me, I mean, they still love me. Don't get me wrong. My parents are awesome. But... Let me tell you guys, obey your parents. I know you're like, but they don't know what it's like to be a kid. Yes, they do. There ain't nothing new that you all have in your life that we didn't have some version of when we were younger. Peer pressure, we had it. I grew up with that. I'm fine. But do you need that? Okay, I'll talk to your parents. They can get you a flip phone. Mm. But y'all, but this is what I'm telling you. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. Our parents have brick phones. And if you struggle to obey your parents with your phone, tell them. There are plenty of apps that your parents can download on your phone to help you obey them. I know. All right? But let me tell you. Let me tell you guys. Obeying your parents is better than being dead in a ditch because you didn't listen to them. I know that's, 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 that might be too deep, but that's true. Obeying your parents is way easier than getting your heart broken because you didn't listen and you decided to do some things you didn't need to be doing. Also makes you live longer. <laughs> Obeying your parents keeps you from having to have tough conversations with your future spouse. These are real things, guys. And I tell you, because you guys are at that age where people around you are saying it's okay obey your parents and that's a form of worship girls then loving and serving people that he loves but they look weird jesus loves them they smell weird jesus loves them they act weird jesus loves them but they're democrat they're republican jesus Loves them. My entire homeroom is Democrat, except for my friend Jenna. That teacher's mean. Jesus loves them. But not their acts. If, if they are truly mean, he does not love the sin. But he loves them. Yes, he loves the sin. That's what I'm talking about, though. You should still love them. Love the people around you as Jesus would love them. You don't have to accept, accept what they do. You know, you just say, I love you. Because you're supposed to love them like Jesus does. I love you, bro. <laughs> Praying for you. That's it. Turn the other cheek. So, our community is filled with people who need Jesus. I mean, all of us need help. All of us need Jesus. Sometimes, you know, I do too. It's fine. So, Worship Jesus through your words and through your actions. All right? So, we are going to listen to a song. And during that time, I want you to reflect. And I want you to truly think. And I want you to get outside the box than just music, worship. How can you actively worship God in these next few weeks? And for the rest of your life. All right? So this is going to be silent reflection time. I will go sit next to you if you ain't silent. Okay? And this is real time just for you. It's not about what your friends think, what your siblings think. I want you to really focus and ask yourself, how can you worship God? Because let me tell you, their heart is where their heart is with Jesus. The only heart that you need to be worried about right now in this moment is your own. Because if your heart's not right, you can't be sharing with other people. Make sure that your heart is where it needs to be and worship to Christ so that you can do what God is calling you to do. All right? So take this time. I want you to be selfish for a second. And I want you to think, how can you worship Christ in the next few weeks and the rest of your life? So I hope you all were able to take that moment to really reflect on how... You can worship Jesus.
through your words, through your actions. And just remember that your words and actions cannot be independent of the other. What you say and what you do go hand in hand. So you can be saying all the right things, but if you're not doing them, you're not being the best example to non-believers out there. So if you're in a walk, the walk, talk the talk. If you're in a talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk as well. You can't do one without the other. All right? So let's go ahead and pray. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Lord, find heaven, we come to you in prayer. And we, just first and foremost, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for coming into this world knowing how just messed up and terrible everything was, Lord. And we thank you that you willingly died on that cross for our sins. And we thank you for your servant's willingness to be obedient to your will, Lord, to allow their lives to be changed, to be turned upside down, to be thrown out of their comfort zone to bring honor and glory and praise and worship to your name. And I lift every single one of these students, either ones watching online and ones here in person, Lord, that they would be willing to walk outside of their comfort, to be the young women and men that you have called them to be, to be the ones that worship you with their words and with their actions and with their lives that no decision that they make is outside of your will for them, Lord. That they would be obedient to you and that they would follow and trust in what you have for them for every single day. That they would reach out to their generation and their people that do not know who you are, Lord. That they may be your light in their houses, in their schools, in their groups, in their functions, Lord. And that they would not cause other people to stumble if they don't do what they need to do, Lord that you would keep them on your path, Lord. Lord, we thank you just for how amazing and wonderful that you are. And we ask that you would guide our steps and our path. And in your mighty and precious name, we say, 